I'm going to show you a couple different ways to make drop shadows in InDesign. The first is going to be more of the traditional drop shadow effect that you're used to applying in other programs like Photoshop or Illustrator. And the second would be by creating a shape below the object that makes it have the effect of the light shining from directly above. Before we get started here, let's make sure we're looking at the same workspace. I'm going to come up here where it says Essentials and change that to the Advanced Mode. That's going to give me some object styles and effects windows that we'll be using here shortly. And the second thing I'm going to do is come up to my View tab and towards the bottom it says Display Performance. And while we're doing this, you might try and use Typical Display. What it's going to do is render it at a lower quality so it goes faster. If you want to see and make sure that things don't look pixelated, go ahead and change to High Quality di Display. And it's going to update these edges so they look a little bit cleaner. So to dive right in, this first shadow the way we made that was simply by going up here to the effects, add an object effect to the selected target, and then right now we've got the drop shadow selected. So what we can do with that is take that one step further and actually open up our object styles window over here on the right, and we can select the object that we've made the drop shadow on, and we're going to go ahead and click on this button right here which will create a new layer style and I'll double click on that new one that it just popped up with and it'll open up this dialog box which will let me name this and basically what this is going to do is save every style that's applied to this so we can apply it to other objects down the road really all I'm interested in though is this drop shadow that it's got applied so I'm going to go ahead and name this product drop shadow and hit OK so now it's saved this effect so what I can do now to speed things up is just click a bunch of things at once and then hit that button and it'll apply it to all of them at the same time. So now all of those get that. Now the benefit here is these are linked to this object style so down the road if we decide that these are too harsh and we want to make them lighter or change the way um, the angle that they're displaying at I can double click this over here in my object styles window come to this drop shadow and we'll go ahead and make sure this preview toggle is selected so that way we can see these changes as we do it and then we can change things like the opacity if I drop this down to say 20 percent and we'll click out here so it takes effect you'll notice that these will get significantly lighter I'll go ahead and stick that back up to let's just throw up to 50 percent so we can see what we're working with and then maybe I take this X and Y offset values and make them smaller so the shadow moves back up towards the center so maybe I'll drop this down to four and that'll move the shadow up a little bit and then the next thing I could do is change the size or the spread and just kinda mess with these settings till you get the shadow you're after and then I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now that shadow's changed across all of these. So, and again, I can highlight all the things I want to add that shadow to. Click once over here, and it's going to automatically add that shadow to all of those things. So, that's a quick and easy way to do it if it works. Now, the downside to doing it this way is that if we get an object that isn't completely cut out like these watches, and I try and apply that object style then it's going to follow the box, the bounding box of that image. So that would basically require that we go back in and cut out all the products that would be placed this way. Now that's where the second type of shadow comes in handy is you don't have to worry about it being isolated or not. So the way we're going to do this is by drawing an ellipse. So if I hit the L key, it's a shortcut for the ellipse tool over here. And with that selected I can go ahead and drag out a circle underneath and by default there's no fill and no stroke so if I hit the D key it's gonna go ahead and fill this with the default just black stroke but I want it to be a fill not a stroke so if I hit shift X it's the same as hitting this little toggle down here and it's gonna swap the fill and the stroke so now that I've got that going I actually still have this product drop shadow applied to this as well I don't want that so I'm gonna go ahead and click up here on none to take that away and it took away my fill again so I'm gonna go ahead and hit D to get my black stroke, hit Shift X to swap that fill and stroke. Okay, so now we've got that shape going on. What I'm going to do with this now is instead of applying a drop shadow, I just want to blur the edges. So I'm going to come back up here to this effects 
toggle and come down to basic feather go ahead and click on that and once again make sure you've got this preview checked because that'll let you see the changes as you make them so I can go ahead and adjust the feather width I'm just gonna drop it down a little bit and hit OK and see how that looks right now I'm also going to come up here and click on my effects window so I can see things like the blend mode and the opacity I might drop this down to 70 percent and change this from normal to multiply so you'll notice this one's a little bit darker this is one I did earlier it's just because the feather wasn't quite as um, as large as the one that's on here. Now this works great because now that I've got this one shape here, I can choose whichever one I like better. I can hold on the Alt key and click and drag a copy. So I can quickly apply this to all of these products as well. And I'm just kind of flying through here just so you can get the principle of the uh, of of the shadows here. Now something else to pay attention to is where these are falling if they're in front or behind of the object. So you might need to, in this case this is in front, so we would want to send it behind and the way I do that is just select the object I want to bring to the front, hit command shift in the right bracket, it's a couple over from the letter P, and it brings it all the way to the front. Uh, that is the same as going to object, arrange, bring to front, or forward or back, whatever you're trying to do. But just making sure that that shadow is actually behind the object. Now this has one other thing we want to pay attention to. Let's say we want to change the size of the shadow. Uh, with the feather effect, it's going to apply that basic feather no matter how big this is. So let's say we scale this up huge. All of a sudden it looks like this is a much more harsh line compared to what it was originally because it's still only applying a little bit of feather to it. So you might need to come back in here and adjust uh, the feather on that. So it's easily done by coming back into our effects here and uh, changing that feather width to make it much more um, aggressive I guess you could say. So once you do that I can change the size of this shape if I've got a larger project product I'm trying to stick that underneath. Um, so that's those are the two different kinds of shadows I would suggest using depending on the effect you're trying to go for. Um, let me go ahead and hit Command C to copy this. Actually, Command X to go ahead and cut it, but copy it to my clipboard. I'll come back down to these watches that we tried to do earlier. A little bit close here. Let's hit Command V to paste that. So I'm just going to drag this up here for a second. I'm going to click on these guys and I'm going to turn, go back to my object styles and turn off that product drop shadow that we made and do the same thing for this one as well and uh, I've obviously got some weird things going on here but let's go ahead and apply it to this bottom one just for the sake of seeing what we're working with so now that I've scaled it back down that feather is too much and it's kinda losing um, the shadow completely so I'll come back up to my effects panel click on that basic feather to bring up that dialog box again and let's turn this down a little bit and again making sure our preview toggle is selected so we can see what we're doing here go ahead and hit OK scale that down and now we've started with an ellipse but we could have just as easily done this with uh, a rectangle over here by hitting the letter M to get the rectangle tool and drag out our shape and basically do the same thing by applying that feather so, and one last thing we could do is taking that basic feather that we did to this, we could create another object style. And I'm going to double click on this new one that it made. And it's keeping that basic feather effect that we just did. I'll click on that so I can modify that if I wanted to. And I'm just going to call this, um, I guess we can just call it feather for now. And I'll hit OK. So now what we could do is we could have multiple shapes. Let's just pretend like we're making a bunch of boxes and again I drag this out and it's transparent so I'll hit D to get my stroke hit shift X to get make it a black fill and by default it threw in that product drop shadow so I'll turn that back off to none and I did it again where it turned off my fill and stroke so I'm gonna hit D shift X okay now we can do this I'll hit my feather apply that to it I guess I could have just hit feather from the beginning come back over here. 
So, and again, that feather's a little bit too much for this, so I can double click on here and go ahead and modify that setting. Turn it down a little bit more. Hit OK. And this isn't necessarily the most realistic thing at the moment, the way we're doing this, but you can see how you could set up the style to your liking and then go ahead and duplicate this over. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some things you can try. Hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, thanks.